What's up, beautiful people? I'm going to break down this NPR Tiny Desk Concert, and I'm going to show you all the chords and all the guitar moves that they use specifically in this arrangement. So come on and check it out. Love like that in the key of B major. Our chords are E major 7, F sharp 6, and G sharp minor 7. Now these three string voicings are a beautiful example of voice leading. When we keep the top note the same throughout the whole progression, it just really ties those chords together. So here, our top note in E is major 7 of E. And then in F sharp, that top note makes it the 6. So we got F sharp 6 with that voicing. And then G sharp minor. Now there's three different ways we could play this over the verse. One, just strum them. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Or pick them just down each of the three strings. Or we could completely get rid of the F sharp chord just to give it a lot more space and just play a big E major 7 chord. And then G sharp minor 9. And we could bring it up to another E major 7 chord just to provide more movement. Right back to our G sharp minor 9. Now the pre-chorus on the top four strings is C sharp minor 11, E major 7, C sharp minor 11 again, G sharp minor 7 to F sharp. And we could just keep it open like that or we could arpeggiate it. And the chorus has the same progression as the intro and the verse. We're just adding in a couple of uh, chords for movement. We'll add a passing chord into the G-sharp minor 7. So it's G diminished into that one. And then we're going to put a 2-5 going back to that first E major 7 chord, which a 2-5 of E major 7 is F-sharp minor 7, B7, back to E major 7. So this is what it'll sound like. Finished. Two five. Right there. I want you around also in the key of B major, or at least that's just what sounds best if I'm going to play anything melodic over it. Um, so B major scale will sound wonderful. And the chords are E major 7. D sharp 7, G sharp minor 7, to F sharp minor 7, to B7. Which, if you remember from the last song, that F sharp minor 7, B7 is a 2 5, which is just a common cadence that takes you back to our main chord, E major 7. Now, when the groove kicks in, the guitar player plays a skanky two string riff on the D and the G string. And what you want to do is see the chords around it so you get an idea of where this comes from. And it sounds really cool because it's generally the same thing, but it fits into every single chord. So from the E major 7, I'm just going to play the root just so you could also hear it, but we only want to hit these two strings, D and G. So if you could see the chords that are built around it, um, you see where it comes from and you could generate your own cool kind of skanky rhythmic ideas that are just low key, not taking up a lot of space, but providing some rhythmic groove to it. To really fill up the space and make each moment exciting, here's a couple of ideas for each chord. Over an E major 7 chord, I could play an E or B major triad. And this move goes from B to B to E. Over the D sharp 7 chord, I could go in and out of the sus. 
or I could harmonize that line staying on the D and B string of the same fret all the way up to the 11th fret. So for those first two chords, or G sharp minor seven, I could hammer on and pull off my middle finger. F sharp minor seven, I could leave that. And then to B seven, I can go between inversions of my B major chord and pick it. Finally, I could add a passing chord going down to that F sharp minor seven, um, just another minor seven chord chromatically. G sharp minor seven, down a half step, and resolve on that. Whoa, in the key of E flat major seven. Now this one has a pretty cool moment in here on the fourth time through the chord progression. So the first three times we do E flat major seven, to D7, to F diminished. Um, and then the fourth time, it actually goes to E minor seven, and then F sus, D7 again. So it kind of gives it a little bit of a lift and an interesting, interesting harmonic moment uh, when it goes to that E, E minor seven. So that's some dope shit, right? And for the beginning, we could just let the chords ring out. Three, four, two, three, four. And then when the groove kicks in, we can kind of skank it up and bring it up a little bit higher. And the voicings we could use is this E major seven voicing, which is a lot like a C minor nine. If I had C in the bass, that's what it would be but it's a E major, E flat major seven, sorry, right there. And uh, D seven, just get those kind of middle three strings, D, G, B. And if I just bring that down a half step, that's basically my F diminished chord. And for the chorus, we could even simplify it a little bit more and think about just grooving on an E flat major seven chord to D seven chord and add in that line in there, the whoa. Okay, so I'll use this shape for E flat major seven. And every now and then I could just arpeggiate my F diminished chord. And that line on the B string goes three, four, five, three. Fool for you. Key of D, chords E minor seven, A, D major seven, and B seven and we can substitute that B7 with a D sharp diminished just to give it some more spice. Now at the beginning of the song, we could start off by just playing these two note riffs. And they essentially outline the chords that we're on. So over E minor, on the 10th fret, hammer onto the 12 B. Move that up a whole step for the A chord. And I can resolve on the G. Over the D, we stay right there. And then we just hit the B. And then we could take that same idea, move it down an octave over my E minor seven chord. I just hammer on from the D and G string. Over the A chord. I'm on the G and B, four and five, hammer on to six. 
D major seven, just hang right there. And then I could lead up to my D sharp, diminished. One cool idea that he does is over the E minor 7 chord, we can play a G major triad. So if I just have my G major triad right here, go down to this A7, D major 7, D sharp 7. And the song's a 12 8, so it's got a triplet feel. And here's one super cool move that he does. Over the E minor 7 chord, that little lick right there. And I'm taking this from the D major pentatonic scale. I'm on the G and B string, 9 and 10, hammer on to the G11. Get the 12th fret of the G. So just that right there is cool. Then 9 on G. 12 on D. 9. 12. That. And that resolves on the A major chord. Very pretty. Find someone like you. We're in the key of E major. Our chords are E major 7, C sharp minor 7, A major 7, F sharp minor 7, to D9. Now that's our main harmony going throughout the entire song. So we'll start off grooving just like that. E major 7 for a measure, C sharp minor 7 for a measure, A major 7, full measure. The only difference at the end, F sharp minor 7, the D9 is on the and. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. The end of 2. 1 and 2 and 3. Just a little bit of a pull to get you right back in. So now, throughout the song, we add in small moments of substitutions to just give it some more movement. So that first moment is going into the A major 7 chord. We're going to insert a quick 2-5 into A major 7, which is B minor 7 to E9. From the E major 7, 2, 3, four, 1, B, e, e, A. There we go. That happens pretty frequently. And then one extra one that we could throw in every now and then a G sharp 7, sharp 9, going to the C sharp minor 7, which is the 5 of the C sharp. One extra thing to throw in there, little movement that we do from C sharp to our 2, 5, and A. So first of all, these nice voicings on the top three strings for B minor to E9. We do a D triad, which when we put the B in the bass equals B minor 9. And all I do is take my index finger down a half step. That's the E9 voicing. And then I'll walk up from my C sharp minor on the B string. My finger is already on the fifth fret. Pinky on seven. And my finger is already on the fourth fret high E string. And those two chords. Into A major seven. I hope you guys got some cool ideas out of this, so be sure to subscribe if you want to support this channel. Leave me a comment if you have any questions or ideas. And if you want more exclusive lessons and content, check out my Patreon in the link below. Exclusive jam tracks, lessons, and all that sweet, sweet jazz. All right, keep jamming, stay soulful, stay nasty.